Six years ago, I got divorced from my now ex-husband. No drama led to this. We simply realized we were no longer happy or in love. So it would have been a clean break, if not for the fact we had a daughter who was now a tween. Neither of us wanted to lose full custody of her or miss important moments in her life. She is the most important person in both of our lives, and we debated on trying to make it work just for her, but realized that would only lead to all three of us becoming miserable. So we entered an arrangement that many would view as unconventional. When we sold our house, we used the money to buy two semi-detached houses that were joined and had a door installed between them. The construction company tried to warn us against this as it could affect resale value. Still, neither of us had any intention to sell, so we had them go ahead with it. We also had them take down the fence between both our back gardens so our daughter would have an extra large back garden to play in. Many of you balk at the door, but there's an agreement. It is strictly for our daughter's use, and neither of us can use it barring any emergencies, say a fire, a medical emergency, or something being wrong with our daughter. She has two bedrooms, one in each house, and every day she can pick where she wants to have breakfast, dinner, and sleep. I won't lie, it was awkward at first, but we made it work for her sake, and even regains a lot of the friendship we had lost, though it's strictly platonic now. Last year, my husband married his girlfriend of three years, a lovely woman who I'm friends with, and I was even a guest at their wedding with my daughter being one of her bridesmaids. All in all, it's an arrangement everyone is content with, except for my boyfriend, who I started to date two years ago. He understood the arrangement entering into the relationship. While he said it was a bit weird, he never protested, and all seemed well. Things are getting more serious, and we've been discussing moving in together. He's made it clear that he wants me to move, as he doesn't want to live next to my ex-husband. I understood that, but told him that wouldn't be happening, as my daughter had to come first, and our arrangement gave her a stable upbringing. He got upset with me and asked how he was supposed to be a father to my daughter when she already had a dad, and he was literally a wall away. I won't lie, this took me by surprise, as I had no idea he wanted to be a father to her. So I told him gently but firmly that he wasn't her father, that she already had one, and that even her father's wife didn't try to be a mother. Instead, she's called by her name. I told him that if he wanted some familial title, he could be an uncle, but I wouldn't permit him to take her father's title when he's very much involved in her life. He told me that if I loved him, I'd move for him. And despite trying to tell him that I love him, he isn't listening. Am I the idiot in this? Not the idiot. It sounds like you very clearly explained how things work in your world. Kudos for coming up with a unique parenting method that puts your daughter firmly as the most cherished outcome of your previous relationship. Your new boyfriend may not be compatible with your uniquely blended family, but of a red flag that he wants to appropriate father's title, good on you for nipping that in the bud. Well done, carry on, without him if he can't get the brief. Everyone's the idiot. This is a very atypical arrangement, and you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who's okay with it. Your ex got lucky. It's the exception, not the rule. Yes, your boyfriend knew what he was getting into, but of course he wouldn't know how he truly felt until the relationship progressed further. It's progressed further now, and he's rightfully uncomfortable. He sucks for guilting you and being manipulative. No, he's not the father, but at least appreciate he wants to be a father figure to your daughter. That shows great character. You are the idiot. If you love your ex-husband and want to raise your child with him, why did you bother getting divorced in the first place and dragging other people into your familial mess instead of going to couples counseling so you could both be the only parents to your child? And this new dude just wants to love you and your kid and have a family, but you won't allow it. He deserves better and you need to let him go. You're wasting his time and love. I watched a TikTok where a couple asked each other what they would change about each other. And they both said nothing. They're both perfect. And they love each other very much, etc. So I thought, let me try this with my girlfriend without filming, of course. She said, I wouldn't change anything about you. 
Maybe I would make you less anxious about everyday stuff so you wouldn't suffer. It's true. I tend to be very anxious and obsessive compulsive sometimes, but I'm dealing with it. Then she asked me what I would change about her. I told her I'd like her to have her old body back, meaning before the global issue when she was more muscular and a little bit thinner. Also, I told her she could be less hairy in some areas, like her face and arms, and I wish her hair was more cared for. I wouldn't change anything fundamental about her appearance, maybe making her legs a little bit thinner, but all my requests are very much achievable with a little effort. She didn't seem to appreciate my comments. Her expression changed and she locked herself in her room without saying anything. We slept on different beds, and the next day she told me something very hurtful. She said, I don't think that your appearance is perfect either. There are some issues, but I love you enough not to pester you about them. When I asked her what she meant, she replied that she wished I followed her skincare advice to get rid of my acne and that I would work out with her more. I told her the difference was that I was honest and she lied. She didn't say anything, but it was obvious that she had been crying the whole night. She went to her sister's house and hasn't been responding to my messages. So, am I the idiot for being honest? So, you saw a trend on TikTok of two people accepting each other and decided to use it as a way to nitpick your girlfriend's appearance and trying to turn it around on her that she lied? You have a lot of work to do on yourself before you deserve a girlfriend. There's only one idiot here, and that's you. Idiot doesn't even begin to cover it, but I have to be civil. However, I will say, with all required respect, I have a very low opinion of you as a person. I hope you learn from your mistakes. OP, you set your girlfriend up in hopes that she would change her appearance for you? The only one who lied is you and manipulated a situation to force an outcome you wanted. Your girlfriend deserves so much better. You are the idiot and hopefully a single one soon. I love these guys who are obviously a three and try to challenge their partner's looks while acting like they're a 10. Grow up. All my requests are very much achievable with a little effort. Good God. Go date someone else who doesn't have to put in the effort to change things about themselves for you. It is understandable to have a preference for a partner. It can be brought up in a much better way if that's important. In my opinion, this would be something affecting the quality of life. If you're not attracted to her, don't be with her. You saw an opportunity to point out how you want her skinnier and hairless and jumped on it. Well done. Come on, man. How did you even write this? Your girlfriend thought you were doing a lame cutesy thing where you both say, you're perfect already. And then you go, I wouldn't change anything fundamentally, but could you lose 25 pounds, start working out and make an appointment with an esthetician already? Christ. I, 33 male, have a young teen daughter named Sasha with my ex-girlfriend Taylor, 33 female. Taylor and I met when we were kids as our parents were close friends. Later, we started dating and in 19, we got engaged. Well, afterwards, she got really weird. After a couple of weeks, she admitted that she wanted to see other people to go our separate ways and see if we were right for each other. She also emptied my bank account before she left. But what made it worse was she started dating people in our social circle and dated a guy a week after we split, a guy that I always had questions about. I ended up learning that Taylor was talking to other guys all along. Well, I tried to move on. A couple of months go by and Taylor's parents show up at my house. They said Taylor needed me to reach out. I had blocked Taylor on everything. I didn't want to, but they looked upset and they were good people. Taylor came over and I was in shock. She was pregnant. I told her to go and get a paternity test. Well, we took the test and it was mine. I asked for an abortion. She wouldn't do it, saying that she wanted to be a mother and didn't care if I was involved, but she was keeping it. I didn't want to be a deadbeat, so I told her I'd step up, but to not ever talk to me outside of our kid. So, we have been co-parenting for the past 13 years. My daughter is beautiful, smart, and independent. She's truly been my biggest blessing, but I hate having to deal with her mom. Taylor hasn't remarried and likes to play this nice guy character. Like, she'll send gifts over for my birthday. She sent food to my grandma's funeral. She constantly will tell our daughter about how great I am. She loves my parents and speaks to them weekly. 
It's enraging. I want her to leave me alone. Taylor sat Sasha down a few years ago and told her why we split. My daughter asked me for my side. She was mad at her mom but forgave her. Sasha now blames me because Taylor is fine being around me, but I get nauseous whenever she is. Sasha is graduating 8th grade this year, so Taylor's hosting a party. She invited me and my parents to come after the ceremony. I declined and said the ceremony would be enough interaction. Another reason I don't want to go is my new girlfriend is coming to the graduation. I tried using this as an excuse, but sure enough, Taylor told Sasha my girlfriend could come too. I told Sasha that wasn't something I'd be comfortable with. Well, Sasha called me very angry. She said that her mom is trying to be nice, and why can't I just be nice like her mom is to me? I said that I'd gladly host a party for her with my parents inside of the family, but that her mom makes me incredibly uncomfortable, and we're separated for a reason. I have no problem going to the ceremony. We have tickets in a separate section than Taylor, but I think it's best for everyone if we keep our distance, as it's her special day. Sasha is calling me an AH still. Am I? Dude, you are the idiot. I'm not going to blindly say you're immature or resentful, but you're the one making it clear that Taylor has grown up to be a perfectly decent mother. Your daughter wants you to be there as her father. Taylor is okay with you, girlfriend, being there. No one is planning a parent trap. I get that your breakup was bitter, but it's been 14 years of that. If you can't put your daughter and your love for her over a grudge 14 years old, get help because it will have repercussions both with your daughter and your girlfriend in the middle to long run. I get it. You hate your ex and quite obviously are still hurt. She slept around and dumped you. However, everything else you write only enrages you because you're still hurt. She tells your daughter you're great. She says you're invited and is cool with your girlfriend coming. She's sending food for a funeral and speaking to your parents. It sounds like she's outgrown her past idiot self and moved on. You have not. Get over it. Move on. Bring your new girlfriend. Try to have a good time. So this is a pretty simple one, I think. My wife, 39, and I, 39 male, are going through an admittedly messy divorce. I thought everything was fine with our relationship until my son, young teen, told me that he walked in on her cheating on me with our next door neighbor's son, 20-ish, I think. It's been going on for a year now. Obviously, I do the expected thing and move out and file for divorce, since you'll probably end up with the house. The thing is, my son wanted to come with me. I made him stay with her until I got a place lined up, but ever since he's been living with me and is refusing to spend time with her or even speak with her. The entire time, I've been supportive of this. She's scum as far as I'm concerned, and I don't see why I should try to convince him otherwise. Custody came up in the divorce, we're both requesting primary, and when it came to asking my son what he wanted, he said that he didn't want anything to do with my wife. Since then, my wife has been plastering all over social media that I've been poisoning him against her, which is causing a lot of other family members and others to get on my butt about it. While I wouldn't say that I've been poisoning him, I haven't exactly been trying to get him to think better of her, which is what some of my family members and friends are angry at me for doing. My sister, especially, has been on my butt about it. She tells me that I should be telling my son off whenever he expresses how he feels about his mother and that I should be encouraging him to sort things out with her and see things from her perspective. While I understand that this would help him get some form of relationship back with her, I honestly don't see how it's my place to do that. My wife cheated on me for a college kid and threw our son and me away for it. So I don't get why I should be helping her to get away with this regarding our son and his feelings about the situation. My sister and everyone else I've shared my thoughts with are calling me a major idiot for it. So I'd like to see if others who don't know either of us agree with them or whether or not it's just a microcosm of our social group and family. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot, OP. What your wife did was hideous. And your son witnessed it himself? So you're not poisoning his mind. His mom did that all by herself. But your child definitely needs therapy. 
and I think it would help you both to get into therapy. As for the family members who are blaming you, tell them to mind their business or you'll cut contact with them too. I personally am not in favor of social media smear campaigns as it does more harm than good and can easily get out of hand. So block and ignore your ex. Other than that, try your best to get full custody of your son and don't pressure your son to start having a relationship with his mom again. He can do that if he wants to down the road. Exactly. As long as OP isn't actively trashing his ex, then he's just being a good parent and listening to his kid vent. I can't imagine how traumatic it was for the poor kid to see his mom in bed with a neighbor who's not much older than him. So completely understandable, he needs to distance himself from his mom at this time. OMG, you haven't gotten your son to therapy yet? In a year, he has discovered his mother cheating, watched his family explode when he told you, and has his parents fighting over him while his life is entirely changed. It is clear that neither of the child's parents has their best interest at heart. And while ex-Mrs. OP was a bad wife, OP is a bad father by not getting his son to therapy for what has been a very traumatic year. Married for two years, have been together for three. We have a baby son together. We bought the dog together, but it was entirely my ex's responsibility, if that makes sense. He does all the work we jointly paid for her. Four months ago, my ex disappeared for 45 days without warning. He travels for work, he's a journalist, so it's not uncommon to see him leave for a week or so here or there, but never for this long and never without notice. He was unreachable the entire time. He returned home as if little had happened. Without notifying me, he left the country and flew to Italy for work. He claims his cell phone was stolen en route to the airport. He worked for three days and decided just to stay there and bicycle across the entirety of Italy. He took a vacation, basically. I thought he was a missing person, or worse, dead. We've separated and we'll be getting a divorce. He's not welcome back home. While he was gone on week two, I gave his dog away to a stranger. I did all the background checks and all that, but it did go to a stranger. I'm not too fond of dogs, don't have time to care for any pets, and it wasn't my responsibility, so I gave her away to people who could take better care of her. My ex is livid, but I don't care. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You recognize you couldn't care for the dog and made sure you gave it to someone capable. You also made sure you did a thorough background check. Your lousy husband disappeared, wasn't reachable, and you had no clue if he was coming back or even alive. Could you have waited a little bit longer than two weeks? Maybe. But you were in an extreme situation. Also, your husband being livid about Doggo being given away is laughable. He never would have gone off the grid if he cared about the dog so much. It's telling he cares more about the dog than being gone and missing out on the vital moments of your baby's early development. He was gone 45 days with no word? You had no clue as to when he was coming back? Frankly, after day three and no word, some people might have filed abandonment and went through with the divorce, thinking he fled the country. Think about it. No phone calls for over a month and no way to reach him. He's not at the hotel because he randomly went biking all over a foreign country. See, I'd have thought he abandoned my family too, especially since the marriage was already over and divorce was coming up. To an outsider, it sounds like he didn't want to pay child support and just dipped. OP, he abandoned that life, including the dog. 